All right, so uh, my name is Mike Herschel. I've been doing Drupal for about six years. I, uh, I, I kind of do a whole bunch of stuff with Drupal, including a little bit of development, a little bit of site building, a lot of theming, but I'm really passionate about user experience and, and usability. So we're going to get into some of that right now, and it's going to be a, it's going to be a whole bunch of real-world examples, modules, and techniques to use, and a little bit of theory at the end, just to fill up some time. So, have you guys ever? Uh, who, has everybody seen this? <laughs> this is, I think, probably in two or three slides. This DrupalCon. So, for you guys in the back, you have those uh, lines at the bottom. There are other. Uh, content management systems, and that huge death line where everybody's committing suicide, that's Drupal. So Drupal is, uh, it's, it's honestly not as bad as when this was initially drawn. Um, we're going to go into a little bit of history there, here. I actually installed Drupal 4.7 just so I could get the screenshot. So this is, this is 4.7. 5.3, you can see Garland. Drupal 6, there's really no difference here. You know, um, Drupal 6, though, when that came out, the contrib mem you know, contributed modules, there's a lot of really good modules that you can do to make that a lot better. We're not going to talk about it, but uh, just be aware of admin menu, admin module, admin themes, and vertical tabs. Going into Drupal 7, um, there was an initiative called D7UX, and um, you can see the goals right here. Um, make the most frequent tasks easy, less frequent tasks achievable, designed for the 8%, that's my favorite. And uh, D7UX has it made a huge difference with Drupal 7. Drupal 7, in my opinion, is a lot better. Um, the admin toolbar overlay, which uh, a lot of people hate, including me, because it's slow as molasses, but it's, it, it, it's really useful to people who don't need to be flying around. Uh, contextual links are, are amazing. You know, shortcuts, dashboard, blah, blah, blah. But, so this is actually a real quote. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, um, <laughs> Real usability depends on you, the developer. And you, can, you can make Drupal really, really suck through bad decisions, poor, poor planning, poor workflow. And then when your end users see it, they think that Drupal sucks. But it's not Drupal, it's you. Or the, you know, or the developer who did it, not you. So I'm, I'm kind of organizing these slides into four, how's it, three or four tenets of usability. So this is the first one right here. Reduce the short-term memory load. So this is Dory from Finding Nemo, you know, played by Ellen DeGeneres. And, uh, all right, so we're going to start with some low-hanging fruit right here. But, but this is one of my pet peeves. So, you know, you type in www.youraawesomewebsite.com slash user. You log in, and it, it goes to your user page. And, you know... What's the first thing that you do? You navigate somewhere else. No one needs to be at their user page. Send them somewhere else. You know, you can use rules to kind of make it uh, and make it more complicated depending on where they were. You can you can use, do the same thing with the login redirect module if you want something a little bit more lightweight. You know, do it. Um, who here uses the core dashboard? I want I want hands. I see like maybe three. You know, so the, 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 so this is probably the most underappreciated piece of Drupal core, maybe. I don't know. It, it's actually not that bad, and and you can customize you can customize it with views and with views bulk operations, and um, that just goes a long way for your content editors. I'm, I'm not going to demo this here because it's pretty basic. Um, the next step up from that is Workbench. Who, I bet, uh, who here has used Workbench? A lot of people. And, and it's a very popular module. It's a dashboard on steroids. And um, it, it does a little bit of everything, including the workflow moderation, content revisioning, which I think is really awesome. 
we're not going to demo that either because it's too complicated for right now. That could, that's a whole, a whole other presentation. So um, another, another, another really simple tenet is, is to simplify, to get rid of the stuff that you're not using. So th the easiest thing to do is, is just to take away permissions. When I deliver a website, even if it's a, even if it's to like a small mom and pop shop for a uh, you know brochure website, you know you can give them the admin account, but make sure the account that they use is is, is has reduced permission, so they don't see all these options. You know, with you know your menu item, your your path auto, and all that type of stuff, and take away these freaking buttons up there. Like, I mean. Have you guys seen seen that before when you go into it? Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a flash button up there. You know. Um, <laughs> uh, better formats is pretty awesome. Who uses better formats module? All right. So that's, that's, that's really good. So for those of you who are not in the know, the better formats module, um, you can set defaults and limit your... Um, your input input formats per field on your content type. So what that means is if you limit it to one input format, that is going to remove the that whole text drop down that your content administrators, your content editors don't know what the heck it is. You know, what's the difference between filtered HTML, full HTML, and whatever else you might have in there? They're, they're really not going to know that. So. This, I'm not going to demo it, but it's kind of cool. All right, so I didn't even know about this module uh, until I put it in this presentation. I was, uh, I was, I was look, I was building a website for my work, and, and the person who's going to be working on this is very, uh, you know, she's a little bit elderly, not very technical, you know, super nice, you know, she makes great cookies, um, and so. You know, I enabled revisioning, and I wanted to remove that revision comment box because, you know, not that many people use that. And, and so I found this great module that does a little bit of everything. And if you look in here, um, you can take away the revision log. You can take away the author information, the path, the publishing options, comments, the cancel button. All this is really great to take away the crap that you don't need. And... This is probably my favorite module right here, Field Group. This module is so awesome. Hold on. It's, it's pretty awesome. I'm actually going to demo this module. So, yeah, you can, you can see these awesome graphics here. All right. So live demos pretty much always fail, so just uh, bear with me here. So I have this, uh, I have this uh, what is it, content type set up right here. Uh, cleverly called field group miscellaneous demo. And if you look at the fields in here, it does a lot of really cool things here. Um, so by default, right now I have it, I have it set to horizontal tabs. So it's, it's a separate, in, in Drupal 6 this was included with CCK when you downloaded it. In Drupal 7 you have to download it separately, it's not in core. But um, so you enable the module just like any other module, and it gives you an option for field groups down here. And uh, so it has a whole bunch of really cool options in here. You know, field sets, vertical tabs, horizontal tabs, multi-page, which is awesome, and accordions. So if you're gonna, right now we have it set to horizontal tabs. So you can you can kind of see what I'm doing here. It's it, if you break your content up in a logical way. Um, your user will thank you, and they'll be able to get to stuff a little bit quicker. Um, going into multi-page, multi-page group, and I'm going to set this to multi-page. You're going to see how awesome this is right here. I think that's just about it right there. Uh, and let me do one more thing here. Move submit button to the last page, yes. Right. Well, I screwed up something, of course. Oh, that makes sense. Thanks. If I 
have to give away a good word here. So this is so awesome right here, which is why I had that awesome graphic going on right here. So uh, it uses JavaScript to do this. It doesn't actually split the form up using any type of you know crazy PHP or anything. It actually just uses JavaScript. Um, you can navigate to the next page, next page, and then you have the submit button at the bottom. And you have the previous page. So this is really good for workflow. You know, I, I when I discovered this, I immediately retrofitted one of my sites with this, and. It's just pretty, pretty awesome. So let's get back to this right now. That's not sure. All right. So everybody here uses the shortcuts bar, right? And because it's on by default. So there's this module called Shortcut Per Row. Can anyone tell me what this does? No, it's just, yeah. So, so, so you can assign the shortcuts per row. So, so this is this is another one of those kind of little. I, don't, I, w I wouldn't call them stupid modules, but like, it's it's an awesome module that's like very lightweight, and and honestly, in my opinion, this type of functionality should be in core. But um, so it, it does what it does. I'm not going to demo it because it's pretty obvious. But if if you give people a little icon that they can click on, I mean that's obviously very useful. Consistent pattern, consistent patterns right here. All right. So this is another one of these uh, little. Not stupid modules. Okay, so this kind of goes into um, a little bit of that uh, Drupal 8 stuff that uh, that Jace, uh showed in that video, which was pretty awesome. Uh, so it basically splits up the save and publish button. You know, I mean, it's, it's doesn't, there's nothing really else to explain about that. This right here is awesome. Oh, no. I thought I made that awesome. Sorry. So, and there, never mind, this isn't awesome. Um, <laughs> Who here uses use UI at a basic settings? All right, this is awesome because you guys are just going to learn something really cool here. So, what this allows you to do is it allows the editor or the content editor to easily um, edit the header, footer, empty text of a view. So you guys know when you're editing a view right here, like you know. If, if, you have to go into your header. You have to add a, a global text area. And you have to say something like this, you know. It's to this rocks. And you can set your text format, all that good stuff, apply. And then you can save it. So can you imagine walking a, a user through that, you know, through this user interface, which, you know, even though it's better than it used to be, is still enormously complex? There's a solution to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under uh, Views right here, Structure Views, and, there, and this module puts this little tab up here called Editable Basic Settings. And so I'm going to say, well, I want my editable, editable field to be the header. And I want to enable this on the test view uh, page right here. And I'm going to save this. And let's navigate to that view. This view, is, by the way, is a tribute to the best all-time rock and roll guitarist ever. Just so you guys know. <laughs> um, so what it does is it puts on this edit tab right here. This is something else that, that, that really, this type of usability should be in core. So look at that. This rocks. Now I can edit this, right? And I have the wishy wig and all that good stuff. That's pretty cool. You know, just so you, just so you guys know. Thank you. Thank you. And... Uh, the person to be thanking right here is, is the fellow who wrote it, which I don't have that down, but if that guy's here, I'll buy you a beer. Who? Jonah Ellison. Jonah Ellison. If you guys see Jonah Ellison, I don't know if he's at DrupalCon, buy him a beer, because um, he's awesome. So, All right, let's get back to this. 
So we got one more thing. Oh, yeah. Views bulk operations. So uh, who here has not used views bulk operations? A couple. All right. So I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick demo. So so what uh, VB, VBO, for those in the know, is is that it allows you to put it puts check boxes next to your views items, and then you can do things with those selected. So this is a regular module that you download, all that good stuff. So uh, let's edit this view right here. And to do that, you just, uh, I think I have the module enabled. Yeah, bulk operations content right here. You add a field called bulk operations content. And it asks you a bunch of different questions right here. Well, what, I, what actions do you want to enable right here? Let's check make sticky. Publish. You know, even stuff's already published. So let's save that and view it, and hopefully, if everything works. So now I have a checkbox next to each of these uh, nodes, and I can make the content sticky and execute it. It asks me, Are you sure? Yes. So this is the type of stuff that you can put into your dashboards, right? Into the into the core dashboard, into into your workbench uh, views. Uh, bulk operations is uh, pretty cool, and and as uh, bulk operations is moving into uh, Drupal Core and Drupal 8, which to me is awesome. You know, cool. All right, what else we got here? Freaking awesome. <laughs> so all right, so this is something right here that, in my opinion, is uh, pretty amazing. So w when you're developing your views and you have a list of rows, you know, you can actually put contextual filters on each of these rows. So I, I was looking for a way to do this, and I started Googling, and I was trying to write some type of pre-process thing. And then I, I found this reference to a comment somewhere that this is included with views. I just had never seen it. So I looked, and sure enough, it was there. So... Let's, uh, let me take out the uh, bulk operations thing right here. So in order to do this right here, you have to add, um, you have to add your fields that you want to appear in that menu, like say edit, and maybe delete. And then you want to exclude them from your display so it doesn't actually show up in the display. And then add one more field. And, uh, what is this? Contextual links, global contextual links. And it'll ask you, well, what fields do you want to show, have show up in those contextual links? Well, the ones we just added. So now, look at this. That is pretty cool for your end user, right? Thank you. And you can, do, yeah, and you can thank all the views developers for that because that's that's included with views. You guys, have, you guys can go home and do that right now. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> all right, let's get back to this. Here. All right, so handling errors and undoes. Here's some more awesome stuff. I'm a, you guys should have counted how many times I'm using that word. Um, so field validation and client-side validation. Who here has used uh, these two modules, one or the other? We got a couple. That's pretty cool. So uh, I'm going to throw a demo of this in a second. So field validation, um, it does exactly what you think it does. It allows you to set validation rules for, for your fields. And it allows you to use regular expressions, different rules, and there's, there's a whole slew of rules that you can do. Client-side validation uh, goes a little bit, it, it goes on top of that, and it puts in a little bit of JavaScript on the page, where soon, if, if you screw it up, if you screw up your, your, um, you know, your input or something like that, it'll notify you before you hit the submit button, which to me is pretty, pretty amazing, awesome. So 
I, I have these two modules enabled, and let me kind of show you the client-side validation right here. I have a couple modules enabled, and because it comes with a uh, comes with a slew of modules here. Um, but so I have a uh, content type in here called field validation demo. That's very creative. So go to manage fields, and so I have a title in here, and I have a uh, text field that says that's labeled as CMS of choice. So I'm going to hit this little validate. This is th this little link over here is new. It has no validation rule, so let's go ahead and add one. You can see all these options in, it in here. You have a words blacklist, date range, emails, length, match against another field, must be empty, regex. PHP, I'm going to select specific values because it's easy. I'm going to call this rule must be Drupal, right? And, I, and we're going to call it Drupal, and then lowercase Drupal. And I can see, I, you, you can set the custom error message, you know. You must choose Drupal. So, all right, so let's go ahead and add, uh, add, add that right there so you can see it in action. It's, it's, you, you probably already know exactly what it's going to do. So field validation demo, let's type in a title here. Content management system, Joomla. No! <laughs> I must choose Drupal. So I'm going to choose Drupal here, and let's see if it lets me save. Of course it will. Bam, there it is. So that's that's obviously a very powerful uh, uh, powerful module there to validate your input. So you you know you shouldn't be receiving any type of bad data anymore now that you know this exists. You know. So all right. So client side validation. Uh, I have a I have a uh, what do you call it. Uh, Content type set up right here called every field because there's a module called every field. Um, so I'm gonna I, I'm gonna add content. And I'll show you some uh, some uh, what options are in there. So say like it has every field in here, an integer. So if I type in the letter A, look at that. Look at this little JavaScript right here. It, it immediately tells me decimal. Is that a valid decimal? No. <laughs> So, I mean, that's, it's, it's pretty awesome, you know, there's, there's no screwing around with this, you know, you're, you're not going to fool it. Um, so, this has a whole bunch of really great, awesome options in here, under client-side validation in here. And um, so, you have validate fields on submit, validate fields on blur, which is when it gets out of focus. Uh, on key up, there's a whole bunch of different, really customizable options in here. I use this on every site that I build. So that's pretty awesome. All right, so this is super easy right here. By default, well, it's not enabled by default, but when, when I create a content type, I always select create new revisions. And this has saved my butt several times, you know, people screwing stuff up and, you know, just revert. And with that is the diff module. You guys, who here uses a diff module with revisions? That's pretty cool. So so I think that was maybe half of you. So the diff module um, will just show you the difference, which is, I mean, how awesome, how great is that? It's super easy. So getting into the holy grail. This is pretty cool right here. Um, Spark. So I'm guessing you guys probably who here doesn't isn't familiar with Spark. We've got a couple. So so Spark is a, uh, a distribution of Drupal uh, Drupal Seven, and it's it's meant as kind of a testing um, in action of Drupal 8's usability. You know, so you'll have all those a lot of that cool stuff that you've seen in that video during uh, the Dries note is available for Drupal Seven, and. It's a lot of it is, is getting a little bit mature now, and, and some of it's ready for uh, for use. And what a lot of people don't know is that you can actually take out 
you can download the modules, the edit module, and, and you can. It, and, and another thing that you can do is you can just take, you know, download Spark, take the library, the CK editor library module, edit module out of Spark, you know, because they may have some custom patches or something in there, and um, dump them, in, retrofit your old Drupal sites, which is to me another really cool thing. So let's go ahead and see if I have this enabled. I don't think I do right now. Um, so I'm going to enable the edit module right here. This is just taken out of Spark and dumped into the sites all modules directory. And I also have the I also have the, the CK editor, the new CK editor, version four dot whatever uh, installed. Yeah, we'll wait for this to enable. And what's going to happen is is you're going to see a lot of that stuff that was in that was in the video is going to be in the, enabled right now. So it creates this little block right here called in place edit operations, and you can you can put this block in different places, and, and there's methods to put it up in the toolbar and stuff like that. So I can hit this button right here, and now I can just type. That's easy, right? I I mean. Who would not want this on, on their website? Yeah, I don't, probably some people. But, um, <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> so, I mean, there's really nothing else to, to demo with this. Oh, yeah, you can see I have way too many buttons enabled here. <laughs> but I, I don't see a flash button. So that's something. Um, and I also have my text format here. You can take all that stuff out. You must enter two words. That's some uh, client side validation. But I already have two words. So forget about that. <laughs> that might be some, uh, some type of bug. But um, so it, it's really important to, to to make this extra effort for your users. You know, and, and, and this is something that uh, I I think. If he didn't, if Drew didn't mention it during uh, today's keynote, I'm, I'm sure he mentioned it before that your content editors and your Drupal end users, the people who are actually using Drupal, they're becoming the decision makers. You know, that uh, people are going look to look to them and say, "Well, do you like this or don't you like that?" And and that's really important. You know, don't make a Drupal site that sucks. Um, let's see what else we got going on. All okay, right, so this is awesome. So get into your user's head. So this is more, more, more theory, but this is, this is really important. And this is actually how I discovered that uh, node form settings module. You know, what is your user doing? You know, pretend you're, you're this person that's going to be doing this, doing this work. And even better yet, do some of this work. You know, work on, work on that person's job for a little bit. You know, and that's called eating your own dog food. You know, and you as the developer, you're going to see, well, hey, you know, this person has to copy and paste this value twice. This person has to do this in this method. If I, if I use field group, it's going to make a lot more sense. And um, you're, you're going you're gonna to find ways, and, and you're going to come up with, you know, you're going to come up with problems that you don't even know, that you don't have a solution for. But at that point, at least you know there's a problem, and you can find a solution. You know, do usability testing. There's there's so many articles on the internet on how to do quick and easy and cheap usability testing, and I think that's pretty awesome. So I, I put this up right here so you guys can all take a picture of it. So anybody anybody who's kind of interested, this is uh, these are all the uh, all the modules that I covered right here. So I'm going to leave this up for a second. I think I'm going kind of fast, but that's all right. All right. Time's up. That's good. <laughs> so, all right. So, so what I really want you guys to take away from this is, is almost that last slide to get into your user's head, to find out the 
problems. If you if you find the problem, you know, there, chances are there's a module for that, and uh, and that's going to be, pr- you know, the, knowing is half the battle. You, know? <laughs> you guys ever watch GI Joe? That's uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to switch this here. My slides will be up, too. So, uh, that's, uh, I'm over a little bit quicker than I thought I was here. Um, but, do um, you guys have any questions? Any, any problems or anything like that? Or any modules that I haven't mentioned? Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So uh, 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 this gentleman uh, said he's playing with CK Editor highlight, uh, add-ons, and there's source code highlighting and a bunch of really uh, cool options. And uh, yeah. if you're dealing with sites with a lot of images and your uh, project managers want to upload a lot of images, how would you do that? All at once, not one at a time. Oh, and there's a couple different uh, modules for that. One is called Pluppload. I believe that's a, uh, uh, a JavaScript library, a PLUP upload. Um, there's another module that uses some type of Flash um, plugin. I think that's called Bulk Image Upload. And then there's another one that uses the H- there's a there's a HTML5 um, what you call it, attribute. Uh, when you're choosing files, it allows it to select multiple multiple files. Now, in order to use that, you have to use Chrome. Um, the easiest thing to do to choose between those is, number one, Google multiple image upload Drupal. And you're going to see a couple different options. I personally like the HTML5 version because I'm not, I'm not using IE. So that's that's just me. Go ahead. I just wanted to give a shout out to the override node options module. It uh, does a lot of the same stuff to remove you know, the revisions and path and other things like that. So uh, what, what module was that? Override node options. Override node? Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, so the override node uh, options. I, I don't actually, do, I'm not too familiar with that. I'll play with that. Go uh, ahead. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how um, Spark works with, like, workbench and revisioning. Like, is it seamless? Is it not really there yet? My, you know, to tell you the, to tell you the truth, I would uh, test it before actually deploying that if you're relying on the revisions. My understanding is that that is working, though. Uh, yeah, that's the type of stuff I would, I would test before. Because <laughs> right. that's obviously pretty crucial. Hey, thanks a lot. When you were demoing the multiple page set up in the, in the field group module, do you know whether or not all of the fields for all of the pages are rendered and then hidden? Because you said it was uh, done with JS. Or are things grabbed in Ajax on as needed? They are rendered and then hidden. Okay, thanks. So, yeah, if you view the source, you can see them. How are you doing? Pretty good. Awesome, awesome uh, talk. Two, three. <laughs> awesome. 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 Um, I was wondering if you have worked at all with the conditional fields module as far as having... Um, so we have two levels of users, and one of them needs to have fields that appear based on another the choice of another field. So I've I've used, <coughs> used I, I have used conditional fields before and, and it works just as advertised. And uh, so basically what conditional fields is is you select one option and depending on that option it will show you another another input form or whatever. So you you want to limit that based on user role or something like that? No or? um actually I just lately have had problems with it saving things like if changes are made and they go back to a page. I was wondering if there were other, uh, other options. You've mentioned working on workflow stuff, so I was wondering if you no, saw I, d- I honestly don't know of any others off the top of my head. Okay. So, Thank you. You're welcome. How are you doing? Uh, just wondering, for uh, views order, do you use any, uh, what modules do you use? Do you use like Node queue or? Oh, uh, so draggable views uh, and Node queue are the, are the two. Uh, I personally like Node queue a little bit more, especially when you when you have a page at the bottom. If it's just a small view, maybe four or five, something like that, draggable views I think works pretty well. So, that's, but I'm I'm a, I'm a fan of Node queue, even though you know there is different interfaces and stuff. Go ahead. Uh, hi. So you say that you use these modules frequently. Uh, my question is, how do you sell these to the client when they always come and say, oh, by the way, our budget is a little bit tight? 
I mean, you just have to say, this is going to save you time in the end. You know, your clients, I, I would think, would be asking for this type of stuff. You know, um, as far as selling it to them, you know, just say, hey, listen, do you want this person complaining to you, or do you want them to be happy? <laughs> so, that's all I got there. How are you doing? Hi. Uh, do you have any tips for uh, previews, which are not awesome in Interval? Oh, no. Uh, very, very quick answer, no. <laughs> um, no. Uh, I, I, I saw that, uh, that uh, D8 is going to do it well during that uh, keynote, and that's something I didn't know. And I, I shed a tear of happiness when I saw that. <laughs> Something that we've done uh, before is use uh, revisions with revision moderation. And yeah. they can basically have an unpublished revision, and they can use that as sort of a preview. So. Oh, that, yeah, that's actually a really good idea. That's, there's so many ways to do things. I just have a module shout out to field collections and reference dialogue. They're yes. both great options. They kind of are sometimes you have to kind of pro and con between them depending on your situation. But it's a great way if you have. Um, a really complicated content type and a lot of different fields, and you want to break that up a little bit. Um, the reference dialog module is also great for sharing little components of fields between different content types. Cool. Uh, thank you. And um, we have to look at those too. Go ahead. Uh, do you have any uh, recommendations for out of the box ways to make CK Editor insert CSS classes instead of inline styles when you use all of those terrible buttons that are? No, so you, um, well, actually, like, I, I have a way that I, I, I do on a site in Drupal 6. Uh, uh, there is, I don't even know what it's called. I, I'd have to kind of get into it a little bit. But, but there is the dropdown where you can, where you can define your, your classes of your spans and divs within, within CK Editor. Um, I know it's possible because I've done it. I remember in, you know, I did it in Drupal 6, and it was kind of a pain in the butt, but I've I done it recently in Drupal 7, and it was a lot easier. It's, it's on the, uh, once you go into the configuration of CK Editor, it's on, like, maybe the next to last tab. I forget exactly what it's called. <laughs> so maybe that'll help you. All right, thank you. Thanks. Hey, I, I have an announcement here, by the way. So you guys heard of all the uh, horrible uh, tornadoes in, in Oklahoma. There's actually something that you can do to help out about it. There's a code sprint that's tonight at the uh, Coders Lounge in the Double Tree Hotel. And um, they're going to be working to help the victims and emergency responders on the ground. To, and they're going to develop a website that's going to coordinate the transportation and help dealing with housing issues. They're going to organize four teams with the goal of creating apps that will help these problems and that will drive people to our web, to their website portal. So basically, right now, they're there's a, log a logistics problem that technology can solve. And uh, web Drupal has done similar things like this uh, before. I know that uh, the company at Development Seed used Drupal to develop a, like a cool map of the Haiti earthquake when that happened. So they're, they're going to be doing this tonight. And my understanding is it's going to be kind of an all night type thing, but it's for uh, obviously a very good cause, you know, with all the tragedy out there. So anybody who's interested in that, go help out. You're probably looking for the help. Any other questions? Or, go ahead. Mm. I do not. But what I do have is I have a hashtag. Um, it's, it's Drupal, the number four, OK. And uh, it starts at 7.30 tonight at the Coders Lounge in the uh, Doubletree Hotel. And once again, the hashtag, if you want to search for that, is uh, hashtag Drupal, the number four, OK. So that's all I got. Thank you. All right, now go create some awesome websites. <laughs>